everybody. This is Brian Aikney with Auto Success Magazine. I appreciate you all taking the time out of your day to join us today for this webinar. Today we're going to talk about five trends that will rule automotive in 2017. Uh, my guests today are Tim McLean and Gary Galloway from NetServe. Uh, we've got a lot of really cool information to share with you today. A um, couple things before we get started that I'd like to let you know. Um, one, if you have not joined Auto Success Webinars yet, the group on Facebook, go to Facebook, search for it, join the group, um, and, and there's a few reasons. One, you can interact with our speakers, with our Auto Success staff. You can suggest future topics or future guests. But most importantly, you can interact with each other. And you'll be able to, and I invite you to share your success and failures with each other through Auto Success Webinars. Because you're going to get a lot of good information on this webinar and, and all of our webinars. And, and most of the actions that you plan to take are not just flip the switch and things are better. And most of them are a process that might take a week, a month, maybe a year. And so as you, as you experience successes, failures, as you have great things happen, you have great ideas, I invite you to share them with each other. And maybe we can all, you know, reach our goals a little quicker. Now, for questions, during the webinar, um, you will have questions, and we will answer your questions. But we're going to hang, we're going to hold all the questions until the end. Um, I invite you to, to, to go ahead and type them in as we go. Um, <coughs> the question, just in case our, our presenters are not crystal clear on what you're asking, I can I can let them know what slide they were on when it came up. Um, and if to ask the question, you'll see on the Go to Webinar page near the bottom, you'll see questions. If you're on a desktop, a laptop, or a tablet, it'll be on the right side of your screen. Just click on the questions and type in a question. Now, if you're on a smartphone or any other type of mobile device, and it varies a little bit my manufacturer, Apple, Android, you're either going to have a header, a footer, or a picture frame that goes around your screen. Look for the question mark uh, somewhere in that header, footer, or picture frame and click on that. Now, that's going to fill the center of your screen where the webinar was with the question, with the question field. And you can type in your question, enter your question. Now, when you go to come back to the webinar, some devices, it's a little tricky. Some of you can just swipe and you go back to the webinar. Others, you'll have to identify another icon that kind of looks like a, like a monitor for a computer, like a flat screen. You click that, and it should take you back to the webinar. Now, if you get kicked out for any reason, power outage, uh, you know, you, you, you accidentally hang up, uh, whatever might happen, if you get kicked out, use the exact same link that you used to join right now and use the same phone number if you're utilizing the telephone to dial in, and, the, and both will work again. Um, with that being said, I, I would like to introduce Gary and Deb. Gentlemen, please take us away. Well, thank you, Brian. Appreciate uh, that introduction, all the great information. Uh, as Brian mentioned, we are recording the session, so all you can tap into that later in case you get called away or you get that random power outage. Uh, really excited to be here with Gary Galloway. He, he's our head of product here for the automotive team at NetSertive. Gary, this is going to be fun. Yeah, Tim. I always love doing these things with you. Yeah, we, we have a lot of great trends to share with you, and I'm actually most, most excited uh, to really show you guys you know, the source of the information and what we're going to talk about today is our digital marketing intelligence report. And this is something that, uh, that we're proud to create here at NetSertive. And what you want to think of this as is really all the high-level data from all the campaigns we've run for hundreds of dealerships here in North America uh, on our, our NetSertive uh, digital marketing platform. All that data uh, crunched down into, into bite-sized pieces that are very digestible to help you see uh, the campaigns that we're running today, the kind of trends that we're seeing, and uh, how we're accelerating results uh, for our clients. And uh, there's two ways to get it. We might as well just get it out of the way at the beginning. One way is you go to our website, you click on the resources tab. In addition to all the great information there about automotive digital marketing, the very first uh, item you'll see at the top of the screen is a link to our 2017 intelligence report. You can click there, fill it out, and get a copy. A second way, which uh, is even more exciting and easy to do, is we know you guys have your phones handy. Pick up the phone right now, uh, set up a text to 313131, just type the word report, and follow the text prompts that come back to you, and uh, you will get an actual link to the PDF. You can pull it up on your screen, you have it on your phone, you can email it to your internet manager, whatever you want to do. So this is the easiest way to get it. So hopefully you guys got your phones handy, 313131, text the word report. So Gary, before we get into our information, I want to hear more from the audience here. And uh, we've got a lot of people on the line. I've got two polls that I'm going to pop up and would love for you guys to vote on those. So the first thing that I'd love to, uh, love to ask you guys, let me hit this button here real quick. Yeah. There we go. So here's our first poll. We'd love for you guys to love for you guys to answer is um, so how is your dealership 
doing this year. We'd just love to love to get a read of the room. You know, are sales up? Are they about the same? Are they down? You know, just go ahead and click the button in there, and uh, you can start voting on there. We're gonna wait a little bit. I see the answers are coming in fast and furious. I see a couple people don't know Gary. That's interesting. <laughs> that is interesting. Oh, it's down. That number is going down as more people are filling it out. That's good. That's good. All right, so let's go ahead and pop it up. Pop up the, uh, pop up the results. There we go. So as kind of as we as we expected, the, the results are a little bit all over the place. So we've got kind of an even share of about the same seems to be winning out. Uh, sales are down for some folks, and sales are up for other folks. So this is kind of the usual what we expect to see. Yep. And of course, we've got some data to, to share later on what's going on here in Q1, and it feels very much in line with what we're seeing out there. So let's go ahead and, uh, and move over to the second question. Let's get some results from those. And this is more reading the room for, you know, what's keeping you guys up at night? And I want you guys to think about this from an opportunity standpoint, because I'm sure all of you out there have been hearing a lot about the opportunity that is digital video. We know you guys have been spending a lot of money, time, energy on television but maybe you haven't yet explored digital video, is it social media? Are you thinking a lot about, guys, I know we have a Facebook page, but I wish we're doing more with it. Is that, is that what's keeping us at night, up at night? And uh, what about mobile? Because you know, I'm still surprised we have a lot of dealers who are not running sort of specific mobile campaigns these days. So just curious, of these three, you know, which, which of these are, uh, which, which trend uh, are you most uh, sort of worried about this year? So we can go ahead and show those results too. Skills got a couple things, and there you go. It's social media, and uh, I think this is a great uh, a great jumping off point. Well, it's almost even between social media and video. So again, we're, we've got a pretty good split here. So these are all things we're going to talk about during the webinar today. So uh, thanks again, guys, for for all your input there, and I think uh, that's a great uh, great indicator of things to come. So. <clears throat> Gary, you know, we actually, I, I was on, actually on Facebook's earning call yesterday. That was, it's always interesting to, to hear the team speak. And uh, as we know, the room is concerned about social media. I mean, we, we talk, and I know, Gary, you work a lot on Facebook campaigns. So kind of give guys an idea of what's going on at Facebook here in Q1. Yeah, so Facebook did have a very good uh, earnings call yesterday. They, their monthly active users up to 1.9 billion with a B, people, it's just a tremendous uh, platform. And it's interesting, when you were hitting that poll earlier, you asked about mobile and social and video. And the really cool thing about Facebook advertising in particular is you can do all those things. You can yeah. hit your social bucket, you can do a Facebook video campaign, and 90% of all usage on Facebook is through the app on people's mobile phones. So you're kind of hitting all three of those things. And it's just a tremendous opportunity right now um, on Facebook to put together a very deliberate advertising campaign. And we can talk more about what that means uh, as we get further down. That's right. Now, it was a very interesting call. And yeah, we, we've been experimenting a lot with it with our dealers and seeing some pretty tremendous results. But let's go ahead and dive into some of our data and we get on to these trends. So let's talk about the top three. First is, again, we're doubling down on Facebook here. It's, it's fascinating to me of the of in general, the five minutes uh, that people spend on their phone, one of them is devoted to Facebook or Instagram. So one in five mobile minutes is spent uh, in one of these apps. That's incredible. I mean, the traffic is there. The audience is there. It, it's just, it's, it's, it's incredible. It, it, yeah, it's a really tremendous place to be, um, like I said, with the deliberate advertising message. And we're, we're going to dive into that a little bit more as, as we get into the meat of this. Yeah, so almost an hour a day people are spending in one of these two apps. And, uh, and what I find your takeaway is that only 4 million of the 60 million businesses that have a Facebook page are doing real Facebook advertising. Yeah, so it's really an opportunity to be where others are not. And, and yeah. that number is obviously going to change, especially with the revenue growth and as people are realizing the importance of being on Facebook in a meaningful way. So the... Uh, there's just a chance to be where others are not right now, and, and it's you know a lot of people are flocking to it because it's an effective way to, to reach people, um, yeah, in a and, meaningful way. Yeah, and we're seeing the clicks there are about uh, roughly a third a cost of a click on Google. It's so it's a tremendous value. So second is um, no surprise here, but uh, we keep seeing all the all the headlines talking about e-commerce, and at the end of the day, we know that people uh, auto shoppers are a robo. 
you know, they're researching online and they're buying offline. So, you know, we continue to talk a lot with our clients about the fact that they have to be present across these 20 to 30 touch points when people are doing research uh, for a new vehicle. And most of those research sources are online and, uh, and still 9.7 cars out of 10 are still obviously bought at a local dealership. So it's all about, you know, we're not talking about e-commerce here. We're just talking about digital awareness. It's simple. Yeah, and one of the things to really keep in mind is, you know, as I work with more automotive groups across the country and, and with other vendors, you know, people are still filling out forms online, and, and, if, and if they are, you can measure them through Google Analytics, and, and we're happy to help you set that up. But also, you're starting to see a trend in people just not filling out forms anymore, and they're just showing up at the dealer. And, you know, people are visiting less than two dealerships to buy a car. They already know what car they want and where they want to buy it from. So it's really important to um, just have a meaningful and consistent presence uh, online with your advertising. And during downturns, I've, you know, these really aggressive and successful groups, that's when they increase their advertising spend because it's a chance to pick up market share. So the consistency, uh, the consistency of being there is very important. Yeah, we're going to share some great data later about how we layer these things together, you know, search, display, mobile, video, social, and how they really work together to produce uh, pretty incredible results in concert with each other. And the third is um, we really want to talk about what, you know, you guys are probably reading a lot of headlines about omni-channel marketing. Well, here at NetSerta, we, we, what we deliver is multi-channel marketing. So we're talking about all those things I just mentioned, search, display, video, social. How do all those work together to have a multi-channel digital marketing campaign? And uh, what we found especially is that uh, the dealers who ran either digital video or Facebook uh, on top of, a, of course, a search engine marketing campaign, saw you know anywhere from a 20 to a 37 percent increase in conversions from their search campaign that's why we said 37 percent more ups with digital video and a similar impact from facebook yeah and where you can really start seeing benefit not only on the the natural lift and in, in your search campaigns but when you start doing these uh what i call connected campaigns across multi-channel so you start doing retargeting activities off of video ad if someone watches all 30 seconds of the video ad, then you can retarget them with a stronger buy message. You know, they're most likely more ready to buy than someone who just doesn't watch the video at all. So it's a really big opportunity there. Yeah, we, we've really ramped up our retargeting this year in a big way, in, in a very positive, thoughtful way, and it's really impacting our dealers uh, in, in a phenomenal way. So let's let's move away from sort of, so we shared three of our, our trends. There's a lot more, obviously, in the guide itself. And let's talk about sort of promotional advertising. We were very excited to team up with one of the top three OEMs here in the U.S. Uh, for over 200 of its dealers for a new uh, 2017 model launch. You can see here, here's a map of all the participating dealers. And uh, at the end of the campaign, we were able to drive more than 16,000 high intent shoppers to these dealerships and have them sign up for a test drive of this vehicle. It was very exciting. This is something that sort of does really well at scale. So the OEMs come, they have a promotion or they have a campaign. We roll it out across hundreds of, of uh, local dealerships simultaneously. It's consistent message, co-branded, localized, and it delivers results. And it's something we love to do. The bigger the audience, uh, the better. And in fact, if you look, here are just some charts showing the data. In terms of the participation across uh, this five-month uh, campaign, the amount of conversions we were able to deliver, you can see there as we went from June to July, the conversions went up tremendously as they ramped up their national advertising campaign for that model. We delivered basically on average just below a 20% conversion rate. That's fantastic, more than five times the industry average. And look at that cost per conversion. You know, anything, anytime you can get a conversion for less than about $60, you're in pretty incredible territory. And we were even below that, Gary. So this is a great campaign. Yeah, this is one of the things that's really important, even at the local dealership level. Is you know the brands are asking them to do vehicle launches, and, and there are a couple. You know, there's always new vehicle launches coming out. And one of the really cool things about this campaign is we're able to, you know, kind of meet the ever the OEM's objectives of, of raising awareness around this new vehicle, and then based on activity around that awareness campaign, we're able to retarget them with specific uh, lead type ads and and lead uh, ads that generate leads. So we're really the cost per conversion is on really highly qualified leads because it's based off of the activity at the awareness stage. So it's people who have shown interest in that specific vehicle. So these are very highly qualified leads. Yeah, we were able to deliver that landing page, uh, deliver 
somebody signing up for a test drive. It doesn't get more qualified than that. That's right. Day. So fantastic. <clears throat> so again, 16,000 website conversions at a cost of, it was $38, so less than half of that industry average, which is, uh, <clears throat> that's why we get out of bed in the morning, Gary, <laughs> to produce results like this. So let, let's double down on this multi-channel uh, message. We just we mentioned it a little bit earlier, just how we find that you want to start, uh, every good digital marketing campaign starts with a search engine uh, marketing campaign. Um, not a set and forget campaign, but a great uh, text ad, search ad campaign. And then you want to layer on these display channels to boost the performance of that search campaign because we see most of most folks that are shopping, they start on Google, they leave Google, they bounce around between you know, videos and Facebook and uh, banner ads and content websites. And then usually the last step they take is they click on a search ad on Google again at the end to find a dealer near them or the dealership that they've chosen. So let's talk about that for a minute. So as we stack all these together, as you make investments across all these different kinds of marketing, you want to think about what you're investing in that is either generating demand or capturing the demand. And think about the three phases of the auto shopper journey. There's an awareness phase, a consideration phase where cross shopping happens within a given segment, and finally decision when they're ready to buy a specific model. So we know that you're investing in lots of these different tactics, guys, and we want to make sure, first of all, that your website is tuned up to generate demand. When somebody hits your site, can they go to the proper spots? Do you have the right places for them to go? Are your VDP pages up to date? And then we want to make sure that, that during the consideration phase, as they're cross-shopping between brands, they're seeing display ads that you're, you're conquesting them. You're comparing the models to other models that are available. And finally, when they're getting ready to buy, you know, that's when the retargeting ads really help and remind them of where they've done research previously. They're going to go to Google, do a search, and uh, we're going to make sure they get in their car, hit the navigate button, and get to your dealership. So it sounds complicated, but here at Insertive, we're really good at making sure that your messaging is consistent across all these different channels, across all three steps, awareness, consideration, decision, and then make sure they walk on your lot and actually buy. So first we want to talk about is digital video. Um, so you see here, uh, along with Facebook, we have a lot of dealers who are doing one or both simultaneously on top of search. So we find that when they add Facebook or digital video to their search campaign, tremendous things uh, are happening. The first thing that's happening is with digital video. You can see here, here's a great uh, co-branded and localized ad for Jenkins Nissan down in Lakeland, Florida. So we have the Nissan uh, digital video ad and there's this co-branded bug in the upper right hand corner and a great uh, panel at the end that mentions that local dealer. And we're finding that when the digital video was turned on, that their search campaign actually delivered 26% more uh, in terms of a click-through rate, a higher click-through rate and a 37% more conversions on their search engine marketing campaign. And Gary, that really means that the digital video was doing its job to drive awareness of the Maxima and the local dealer so that there was additional searches on Google. So the search campaign got credit for the activity and the click, but the digital video ad was driving the awareness. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And, and you see the same thing across, you know, even back in my... Nielsen days, the television campaigns, that's kind of the same purpose of, you know, television is the call to action is generally a Google search. So it's going to definitely lift search. The cool thing about our video product and offering is you can do it for a whole lot cheaper than a local television buy and you still get the similar lift in your search performance. Exactly. In fact, uh, here, you know, uh, you guys only pay when somebody watches the video all the way to the end and that's basically two to six cents. So imagine asking your cable provider to say, I don't want to pay when you can guarantee there was a human being watching a video. It's not going to happen. But uh, as Gary mentioned, you know, we, we always preach a healthy mix here of traditional and digital advertising. So you guys are already investing in TV ads. Fantastic. You got billboards out there, whatever you got. Great. Those are awareness uh, creators. And then it's the digital we're finding today is what's capturing that demand when people are ready to take action. So if that's digital video, guys, Facebook was even more exciting for us with 27% higher click-through rate, 5% higher uh, search conversions. Again, Gary, because, you know, with Facebook, we talked about this. We do a Facebook Friday piece, by the way. Go to our blog and check it out. We talked uh, last week about using Facebook ads during awareness, consideration, and decision phases and using different kinds of Facebook ads during those phases, right? Yeah, that's, you know, we, we could have a whole webinar on, on that very topic. It's important to just realize what you're trying to do with your advertising campaign. If you're trying to drive awareness 
then drive awareness and, and don't try to measure conversions off an awareness campaign. Just know what you're doing and what you're trying to do with your money and then just pay attention to the metrics that matter in each of those phases, awareness, consideration, and decision. Um, and it's you know, extremely important to do that across any sort of multi-channel marketing campaign. Yeah, in fact, Gary, you see, this is, this is Wrenchler, uh, Chrysler, Job, uh, Chrysler, Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram Chevrolet. That's quite a mouthful. <laughs> a, CDJR, let's go with that. And you'll see here, and Gary, I know we know that this is the type of ad here, this multiple image carousel for a Cherokee. That's great at the consideration stage, right? So if we've driven them to uh, Wrenchler's website and they were look, checking out the, the, the Cherokees, when they leave and go to Facebook, this is the perfect ad to put in front of them when they're considering uh, Jeep. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And that's you know basically the path is you know here that that sort of in, in Facebook uh, has dynamic product ads, so we're able to dynamically build out carousel ads, as you're seeing here, of a consumer who was in the awareness bucket, and then they clicked on the dealer's website and went and looked at the Jeep Cherokee Sport, and then they left, and then they're being retargeted on Facebook with the exact vehicle they looked at, and then five other ones that they can consider. To purchase so it might sound a little creepy to you but it's very deliberate yeah. and in my mind it's kind of helpful to the client because it's not wasting their time looking at stuff they're not even interested in that's right that's right so definitely we've seen and we mentioned earlier you guys are, are concerned in a good way with video and social and this is the result of the dealers who did it last year the impact on their campaigns and it's only getting better as the year goes on so let's sort of backtrack to the fundamentals I like the fundamentals we need to be thinking about the fundamentals and that's that when you're investing in digital, it's important to be found all day, every day. We would say consistent digital visibility is really critical. What we're finding here is, and by the way, this is a chart of the average share of voice across our client network. And what you're seeing here, guys, is that as you know, your digital video, I'm sorry, your, just your digital advertising campaign's budget resets every night at midnight. And Tim, how are you, how are you using share of voice here? Yeah, so what happens here, guys, is that, again, when, when your budget resets at midnight, you're going to get great share of voice through the early morning hours because there's not a lot of searches going on. But as your, as your budget is being spent over the course of the day, your visibility is going to drop because your budget is going to be spent. So what we're finding is, is that a lot of our dealers, by about dinner time, their share of voice, their digital visibility based on their budget will drop below our key performance indicator, which we would say is 70%, or 70 times out of 100. If there are 100 searches for Jeep Cherokee in your market today, if you show up for 70 out of 100, that's a 70% share of voice, that's good. That's our baseline. We'd rather you be closer to 80%, but 70 is good. In this case, what this means is, is a lot of our dealers should be spending a little more on digital. They want to push that line as far into the evening as possible. So some people would argue that a 50% share of voice isn't that bad. You're showing up half the time. We find our, our strongest performers are showing up 70%. And this stuff is, is no different than, than television. You know, 50% reach, 75% reach. It's basically just having enough presence so that you're not invisible to everybody else. So it's a range uh, as far as what's best practices. We find that, that sort of having a dominant share of voice of 70% at least right. makes a difference. When um, I was a client of NetCert, as I even noticed a difference between 70% and 80% share of voice as far as short showroom traffic. There you go. In fact, so as soon as this webinar is over, guys, if you're already doing digital, which I'm assuming many of you are, I want you to call your vendor, open up your reporting, look for a metric called impression share, or that's what Google calls it, impression share, or look for share of voice. And if it's not 70%, we want to have a conversation with you. Uh, so let's talk about mobile. So we, you guys mentioned earlier, it still is one of your, one of your opportunities is last year we found on the advertising campaigns that we're running for our, our, our many, many clients uh, that smartphone clicks grew 82%. So what this chart is showing you is that the blue section in the center, those are the mobile clicks that are happening on our ads that we're running for our clients. That area is growing at the expense of both tablets and desktop and laptops com uh, computers. So what does this mean? It means you need to be thinking about Facebook. It's your great, it's your, it's your inexpensive backdoor onto the phone. And you want to be looking at making sure that you have banners that are right size for mobile phones to run on Google and other uh, banner spots, as well as making sure that your, your search engine marketing is tuned up and properly worded uh, to look perfect on a smartphone. And just to add something to that, Tim, and, and this you know is important to be very deliberate with your advertising and sending traffic 
paid traffic to your website, but then you know, since this is a mobile world, definitely take a look at your mo your website on your mobile phone. Is it easy for the user to do what it whatever it is you want them to do? Schedule a service appointment, call the store, see how easy it is for you to do that on your mobile phone, and then talk to your website vendor about possibly optimizing it more for mobile. Yeah, in fact, uh, if you do pick up your phone and you see that the experience isn't that great, talk to your webmaster about having a mobile responsive template added to your website. And, uh, and if that's not possible, this may be the year you need to think about a new website, let's be honest. Because if it doesn't work perfectly on a phone, you're basically giving away opportunities to other dealers that have better websites. And it's your, it's your digital door, Gary. I like this uh, rule, the three-click rule. Have you ever heard of that, three-click rule? No, what's the three-click rule? Basically, don't make your customer perform more than three clicks mm -hmm. to the desired action. And it's just right. a good, good rule of thumb to use when you look at the user behavior uh, of your mobile experience. I like that. And I'm going to bet between the second and the third click, you probably lose half your people. So you probably want to do two. Uh, and again, this is the change, guys, in mobile activity by OEM. <clears throat> and you can see by far... The most increase, the most uh, new activity was coming from these mobile devices. Every one of us Jeez. in the room has a phone right next to us. These percentages are crazy. That doesn't mean that you still don't want to be present on desktops and tablets as well, of course, but uh, mobile is vastly outpacing the growth. And uh, there are some people that only have a smartphone. They don't even have a computer anymore. I know. It's they've, crazy. They've gone, they've done, uh, they've, they're taken over. Uh, now, so we, we've talked about share of voice just being there. Uh, we've talked about the importance of mobile, but let's talk about positioning. Because just like in, in, a, in a Formula One race, uh, if you're not first, you're last, as Ricky Bobby would say. So your dealership, you need to be first uh, to, to, to finish first. So the great news here at NetSertive, again, this is, this is our high-level numbers across all of our campaigns. We deliver ads on Google and Bing in the top two positions consistently. And uh, so basically, you know, we're, we're about at a 1.8 ad position. That means you can expect when you do run these custom worded uh, ads from uh, in your campaign with us at NetSertive, that we can make sure your ads bounce between those top two locations for the models that are most important to you. And if you really think about that average ad position, I didn't really spend much time thinking about that too much but until you do a search on your mobile phone yeah. and you look at the very first screen on your mobile phone of what's there and it's basically two ads yeah. on your mobile phone. So that's why it's extremely important to be in that top two ad position. That's right. I mean, we have ads built for, for every OEM, make and model, and we take the time to customize them to your dealership, uh, make sure that your calls to action are matched up with your current specials. Uh, there's so many things that we do to make sure that these ads are never cookie cutter and high performance, and that's the only way that Google will allow you to consistently show up in the top two positions is with custom ads that, that go to great landing pages, whether it's a vehicle detail page, a list of inventory, or, you know, just information about a given maker model depends on the category. So we're, we're, we've always been very, we have a lot of pride in, in our search campaigns and they are the basis of our performance. So 1.8 is fantastic. Wonder what your ad position is. You guys should go look it up. Uh, next is of course, you're showing up 70% of the time with a custom worded message in the top two. That's all good, but it means nothing unless they actually click on the ad, right, Gary? That's right. So in our case, you know, we're we're basically we're at almost at an eight percent average click-through rate, which is great. It's well above average. Yeah, more than three times the industry average. Yeah, that's a pretty yeah, that's very important to look at the average um, click-through rate. Mm -hmm. what, what did you say the average in, the industry about average 2%. is about two percent? Yeah. Yep. Yep. So that's pretty phenomenal to have that much more traffic coming to your mobile optimized website, ideally. That's right. And it's all about, uh, we, here at NetSertive, we, do not, uh, we don't want to just send you a ton of traffic. We, we want to send you high intent traffic. So getting an 8% click-through rate from somebody who is you know, ready to buy to the right page to set up that test drive or call you and take that next step is important. So um, you know, we'd rather have you know, uh, high quality folks come to your site than just a mass quantity of people that happen to be clicking on your ads. But that is a fantastic number. So those are great. So our campaigns are performing well. We've got great, you know, search click-through rate, positioning, 70% uh, share of voice. Those things are firing well. Uh, Facebook and digital video impacting performance. Let's talk about what you guys really care about is, Tim, you have great KPIs. How much is it going to cost me to get a customer on my lot? So the good news is, is that we have spent a lot of time, energy here in using technology to keep the cost per clicks in line. And 
We're, we work directly with OEMs on their campaigns, and we want to make sure that you're not overly competing with other advertisers, and that's the only way to keep the cost per click where it is. And what I love, guys, is what, what else in your dealership is actually less expensive uh, this year than it was last year? Well, how about a click on Google? I mean, <laughs> the average Google advertiser, their cost per click went up 11% last year. Uh, basically, at NetSertive, our average cost per click went down slightly for all of our automotive clients. So how's your cost per click, guys? Uh, I'd love, love to know the answer. So you see here in general, what's the best value on this chart? Well, take a look at near the bottom, guys. It's Facebook, and it's uh, the display advertising that we do with banner ads, um, and Digital video actually increased in price a little more because we have more people running digital video ads. And by the way, you only pay this, it's roughly, you know, it's almost the same price as, as the average click on Google, about $5.95 and, and um, on a video ad when somebody actually clicks on the video ad, which is uh, which doesn't happen that often. It's more like a display banner where it's more about the impression. Yeah, the you know, important thing here. You got to present this stuff, you know, in some way. But it's important to always keep this in the context of what we've been saying at the early, at the beginning of this, is the awareness, consideration, decision, and really tying it to the objective and what you're trying to accomplish. So, in some cases, you can run these campaigns and have an awareness campaign, an awareness targeted campaign, and awareness messaging. And your goal is not a click, right? Your goal yeah. is to deliver as many impressions as possible. So, it's important to look at that in context with what you're trying to do as an advertiser. That's right. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, when somebody does click on it to take action, this is roughly what uh, what you're going to pay for each of these tactics uh, inside of yep. one of our streetwise campaigns. Um, and now we know what it costs per click on each tactic. How about let's roll it all up into a cost per conversion or a cost per acquisition? Well, I'm really happy to say that uh, six out of ten of our clients paid thirty dollars or less for a conversion last year. So. You know, on average, you know, the NADA says that the, a dealer will spend, you know, roughly $600 in marketing for a given new, you know, new sale, right? So, and that's sort of, we're happy to say, would you like to pay $30 for, uh, for a customer? That, that's a pretty good value as a part of your overall uh, marketing and advertising strategy. And I just have to say this because I know some people on the call are probably used to being, maybe buying third-party leads. Uh, or maybe doing that in the past where on average you'll pay $20 a lead and those leads are maybe sold to two or three other dealers in town. Very, very low quality leads, at least based on my experiences of using them. Um, this is excluding the leads from the manufacturer, but these are just independent third party leads. So this really just, I just wanted to reiterate what you said, Tim, is about the quality of traffic, the quality of leads that come from that sort of, because they're very deliberate, they're placed in a very deliberate way. So it's just based on intent signals, and that's why our leads are higher quality than just random independent third-party lead providers. That's right. These are people who <clears throat> are in the radius that you've chosen to target. They've seen it, awareness campaigns. They've, they've been encouraged to consider you know, within that segment other makes and models, and when they're ready to decide, we're going to drive them to your website to the proper pages so that they convert. And we want to reduce the number of clicks, right, Gary, because each click is going to cost money. So if we can speed them through the buyer's journey a little faster, it drives down the cost per conversion at the end. It's not as many clicks to get them uh, to take that last step. No, that's absolutely right. And if you think through that all the way to the website, in some cases, you know, the website traffic might have a small decrease um, in overall traffic. But again, it's high intent quality traffic that converts at a higher rate. And that's kind of the story that we're, we're telling here. And you can see the importance of that. It's I think John Wood Wooden said, don't mistake activity for achievement. And at right. a dealership level, that's extremely important to not spend your wheels working bad leads. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> and again, here's the percentage of our clients who paid uh, who paid this amount per conversion. And you'll notice, again, the, the vest, a quarter of our clients paid between 11 and $20 per conversion uh, last year, which is great. And by the way, all the numbers are, are in line with this or actually slightly declining this year so far, as far as I can tell. So Gary, let's roll into some recommendations. I think we've made a few at the beginning. Let's make a few here at the end. Uh, the first one is digital video. So if if you only do one thing after this call, you're gonna call your you're gonna call your vendor today and ask them what your share of voice is. But the next one's gonna be all right. Let me look at my TV budget. I'm gonna take 25% of it and give it to NetSertive to run digital video ads. Right? That's a huge takeaway here. Because or maybe it's not with us. Maybe it's with somebody. 
but don't uh, don't miss out on the digital video opportunity. Yeah, no, it's and, and like you said, if it's if it's not us, just consider doing digital video. And, and in some cases, you know, it's pretty simple to do. You can take your existing thirty second TV spot. That's not best practices or recommended, but it's certainly an option. And shift it over to digital video, where you can get highly targeted, intent based websites where you can target your message. So Ford F-150, you know, if you're trying to target Ford F-150 owners, then we would run that pre-roll video on sites, websites, where Ford F-150 owners are likely to visit. So it's just extending your message, extending your reach, and doing it in a digital format that makes sense. Right. And we find a lot of dealers who say, you know, I didn't miss it when I turned off, when I moved 25% of my TV budget. It didn't really affect my TV metrics all that much. I still was getting good reach and frequency in my market. But now I was able to pick up additional viewership through the digital channels. And something that NetSertive does that a lot of other folks don't is, you know, we certainly can get your ads on YouTube, but we don't stop there. We have access to hundreds of other very relevant digital video sites where we can run these ads, uh, which makes us really different. A lot of folks are just doing YouTube. We say YouTube's a great start, but uh, YouTube has its own issues and challenges, and, and it tends to be more expensive. Uh, and we can get... Uh, better views, uh, higher quality through some uh, lesser cost uh, outlets. Yeah, and it's actually, Tim, 15,000 different uh, websites that we have access to. And the That's important right. thing, and Tim mentioned this before, and I wanted to reiterate it, is you only pay when the user either clicks on the video, your call to action, or when the user watches the entire video. Right. And you cannot do that with television uh, at all. <laughs> That's exactly right. And as you mentioned here, all the viewership stats are showing that uh, you know, TV viewership is declining. So you need to follow the eyeballs from traditional TV and cable, follow them online, just like you've been doing all along. So next is think about making sure that, you're, uh, that your marketing campaign is diversified because if it's not, you're going to overpay for all these opportunities. So again, if let's say you know we know, uh, and, and Gary Leslie, we talked about this, there are a lot of dealers, look, I just want to do a campaign to maximize reach. So if you were just going to focus on reach, we would say you need to do search engine marketing with some display with retargeting on top of it or social media. And that's going to give you a $7 CPM or about $7 to reach a thousand people in a given market. So if that was your focus, those are the tactics that are going to deliver that reach. Um, but if you want to focus on getting actual purchase ready folks to your website and on your lot, we would say, uh, again, search engine marketing and add at least one display channel, which would be banner ads with retargeting, digital video, or social. Um, and again, the takeaway here is that when you layer on some additional tactics on top of search, you never just want to do search by itself. If you turn on just one of these display channels, your cost per acquisition goes down 60% in general. Uh, with digital video, it went down 57%. And with Facebook, it went down 66%. So this is sort of, we like to say it's the one plus one equals three effect. <laughs> what you're going to do, you're going to add something on top of search and you're going to get an outsized performance just by uh, diversifying your marketing plan. Uh, and last, if you wanted to have the most simplistic way of thinking about things, if you're at a smaller dealership in a smaller market and you have a small budget, we would argue very simply 75% of whatever you can invest, put it into search. 25% in display. We have other folks that are much more growth interested, that have much uh, higher sales goals. And if they have more money to spend, Gary, we would say, look, you can probably move down your search investment a little bit to about 60%, put 40% into display. And again, we would argue uh, display banners, video, and social all together are going to supercharge your search results. So Gary, there's good trends there. We gave away the farm. That was some good information. That's all of our, that's all of our good stuff. Um, this is the year of multi-channel. This is the year of Facebook and digital video. And we appreciate your time, guys, tuning in today and uh, taking a look at all this. Make sure that you get a copy of our report. Remember to send report to 313131, and you'll get a link to that report right to your, uh, right to your device. You can hit that email button from there, share it with your Internet folks, uh, with your GM, whoever else needs to see it. And, you know, we really, I would say if there's one thing you do when you get off the call, when you're looking at your current campaign performance, take a look at the metrics we're able to deliver for our dealers to, uh, to your campaign report from, you know, from April. See how, the, see how the stats line up and there might be something that sort of can do that's new and different to really help you guys lift your, your performance. 
So with that, I want to go ahead and, uh, uh, Brian, I know you're still on the line. Let's go ahead and take a couple questions. Sure. Okay. Um, actually, this is not the first question that came in, but it was one that came in on the last slide. That we are super aggressive. What would be a minimum search percentage? 60%, Kerry? I mean, it depends on the market and, and your tactics, but we would say 60% is probably right. Yeah. Yeah. Kerry, you shaking his head, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, being super aggressive um, means, yeah, 60% search. I would go really heavy. I'm very bullish on Facebook advertising, so I would go very heavy on the Facebook piece. Um, again, along those lines of awareness, consideration, and decision, I would put a lot of the Facebook budget into the decision piece to generate quality leads, um, and that would kind of be the overall distribution I would think through for that. Yeah, and in terms of a strategy, uh, Gary, we, again, we mentioned this when we talked last Friday on the Facebook Friday. So if we think about the different kinds of ad formats that we roll out on Facebook for those different buckets, you know, at the awareness step, we're probably going to use a single image ad mentioning the dealership or the make and model, right, at a very high level just to make them aware. So that's a single image ad on Facebook. When they get to consideration after they've clicked through to the site, that's when we get into the carousel, right? Yeah, we, we dynamically build carousel ads off of the inventory feed of the vehicle they look at. So it gives them an opportunity to not only see a carousel ad of the exact uh, vehicle model they looked at, but also five other ones uh, that are on the lot. And if they click on one of those images, it takes them directly to the vehicle detail page of that model. Um, and if they look at that more than twice, then they're going to get served up a lead ad the next time they go to Facebook. So it's just really following the... the um, signals that we're getting from the buyer uh, along that journey and serving up the relevant ad at the right time. Yeah, and that lead ad at the end is going to be a special offer because we know exactly what they were looking at. You know, come in by Friday and this is the special offer for you. So, yeah, I think it's a great question. Again, you don't want to ignore search. You want to be invested there. But Facebook is really where we can do some pretty incredible things. All right. Um, here's the next question, gentlemen. Uh, what is the total average share of voice per day? Total average share of voice per day. Well, again, we we measure it by this this percentage of if there's a certain amount of activity for the categories that you're advertising for. We want to look at the overall amount of search activity and other placements that we can get online that you need to be showing up to at least seventy percent of the time. Again, that, that's our KPI for share of voice, seventy percent. And hourly share of voice changes based on you know the search volume for those specific things that you're, 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 cert, you're advertising for. So we try to maintain that 70% share of voice throughout the day. Yeah, and the only way you can do that is with technology that's doing bid optimization. Uh, we're continually writing and rewriting the ads, and we're just we're continually uh, making sure that the campaign is tuned up based on search activity and, again, uh, the bidding strategy of other folks in your market. And we have great technology to help us with that. Okay. Um, Here's, here's our next question. Um, why is it so important to be in position one or two? Why won't three and four work just as well? Well, there are numerous Google studies that show this, and our data certainly proves this out, is that uh, a majority of the clicks, when somebody is low in the funnel, when they're getting ready to actually make a purchase, that uh, they're going to click one of the top three ads 85% of the time. And of that percentage, it's 51% of people will click the very first ad. And the thing to keep in mind is, as you know, there are now four ads at the top of the, of the page, and that's almost the entire um, upper, you know, upper half of the page are called above the fold. So it's important to be there, but again, position one and two are really where you know, the, the, the best clicks are going to come from when people are, are lower in the funnel. But again, we still see some activity from position three, but again, we've optimized our campaigns to be position one and two, you know, based on the stats that we're seeing and, and, and the high quality activity and the sales numbers we're able to generate for our for our dealers. All right. Well, this is Brian Agney with Auto Success. Um, looks like that's all the questions we have typed in right now. Uh, if you guys have some more questions, please type them in right away. We've got a couple more things we want to share with you before we go. Um, if, if you like what you saw today and you feel like somebody else in your dealership could benefit from seeing this webinar, if we do have a recording, uh, everybody on the line, you will get a, a thank you email from me. Uh, thank you for attending. And that, that it, it, it's a robotic email, but that is my real email address. And so just reply to that, and I'll get you in touch with, with our guests and have, and have them send you over the recording. Uh, if, if you'd like to get in touch with, with either Tim or Gary, uh, 
you know, you can also reply to me, and I'll get you in touch with them, and, and um, or, you, or you can just reach out directly to them, sort of. Uh, Gary, Gary, is there anything else you guys would like to share with our audience before we, we let them go today? No, I think we covered it. We're, we, we were super excited with the results we were able to generate last year, and this year we've invested even more time, energy, and money in uh, in Facebook and these digital video channels, and uh, we're going to have lots of new things to talk about as we get closer to the end of the year, so it's never been a better time to be involved in digital marketing, and, and we're, we're, we're really excited over here as our client base continues to grow and we're able to produce those results. Yeah, and feel free to reach out you know, to us. Uh, Tim and I obviously love talking about this stuff, and we sometimes go overboard in the office geeking out about this stuff. So we're more than happy to answer any questions you have, generally, general questions, whatever. We love talking about this and sharing our knowledge uh, on this topic. So feel free to use us as a resource in any way. Great. Well, guys, thank you for taking the time to join us today. Um, Actually, we've got a, a bunch of different praises coming in. Uh, most people say good job. But, but okay. uh, yeah, but to all the guests, I appreciate you coming. Uh, both Gary and, and Tim, thank you guys for presenting. Uh, if there's a topic you guys, any of you attendees would like to see in the future, please you know, reach out through email, reach out through Facebook, uh, how, how, or call us on the phone if you'd like, and, and let us know about topics and guests you'd like to see in the future. Um, I'm sure we'll probably have Tim and Gary back here soon. Uh, gentlemen, uh, thank you for coming. Everybody have a wonderful afternoon. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, everybody.